Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Android SDK reference. The Android SDK reference contains all the documentation for all available public APIs. And if you want to learn more about Android, this is the place where you should be spending a considerable amount of time. You can visit the Android SDK reference page from this URL. And what you see here uh, on the left side is a panel which displays the list of all publicly available Android packages. And the right side currently displays uh, the package and a description about the APIs that are present in that package. There are a lot of packages. One of the most uh, mostly used package is the android.widget package. This package contains all our UI components, the default UI components that comes with Android. To take a look at this package, I'm going to click on this package. And you can see on the bottom panel, all the interfaces and the classes that belong to that particular package, that is the android.widget package are displayed. On the right, we have the interfaces and the classes along with their descriptions. You can see the list of classes. Most of the classes are known, such as the analog clock, button, calendar view, checkbox, check text view, a lot of classes that we use while we are working with Android UI or present in the Android or widget package. You can see the radio button, radio group, rating bar, spinner, text view, toast, toggle button, etc. So this contains the documentation for all the available classes within the Android widget package. Let's take a look at the text view. I'm going to click on it. You can see this is the documentation for the text view. And uh, this is a public class, name of the class. And if you want to take a look at the source code, you can use this link to view the source. And we also know the super class as well as the other interfaces this text view implements. Here is the class hierarchy. You can see that text view extends the view class. And you also can see the list of direct subclasses button, checked text view, chronometer, digital clock, edit text, text clock, all these are direct subclasses of the text view. And we also have a list of known indirect classes. And uh, we have the autocomplete text view, checkbox, compound button, extract edit text, radio button, switch, toggle button. So these are all indirect subclasses of the text view, which means most of the methods that are uh, defined by the text view can be accessed in these classes as well. For example, set text is a method that can be commonly accessed by all these classes. And you have the class overview. It has a short description about what this class does. And followed by a summary. The summary contains the list, list of classes, nested classes within the class. And you also have an interesting stuff here. It's the XML attributes. And these are the XML attributes that you can use in your layout. Uh, to change the properties of text view. There is a property called as the auto link which allows you to uh, link URLs and email addresses automatically and they can also be converted to clickable links by using this property so you have to use Android auto link and you can also achieve the same effect using the set auto link mask method from your Java code. So here are a list of properties that you can use in your XML See, you can see this Android editable, editor extras, and there is also an Android ellipsize property which can ellipsize your, that is, uh, truncate your text if it exceeds a certain limit, which is uh, the space available on the screen. There are a lot of methods and uh, properties that are specific to the text view, which is clearly documented here. You can click on any of the attribute or you can click on any of the method to take a deeper look at it. Let's go and take a look at the setlines method. 
I'm going to click on it. And here you see that uh, we have a documentation for this method which says the set lines method will make the text view exactly this many lines tall. Which means if you call text view dot set lines five, your text view will be able to accommodate five lines of text. This is really helpful. This SDK reference contains a lot of uh, methods for all the publicly available APIs. So you can learn a lot from this documentation. Also, if you want to search for other classes you are interested in, you can do that as well. I'm going to go search for a class, go to the top of the page. And here you can see the search tool. You can type in a name of any class that you're interested. I'm going to search for SQLite database and click enter. So here is the documentation for the SQLite database class. I can have a look at this class and I can learn what this class does and what are the methods available so that I can use this class appropriately. So this is a very important uh, reference document. After a while, you will be spending a lot of time here in this document. Also, in the beginning of this uh, Android course, I have mentioned about a Chrome extension that allows you to search the SDK reference. Now I'll be showing you how to use it. Click on a new tab and type AD tab. And now the Android SDK reference search extension is ready to search for your classes. Let's go ahead and type button. So you can see the list of suggestions that contains the text button. Let's go for image button. Press enter and you'll be taken directly to that uh, image button SDK reference. This is a really helpful tool. You don't have to go to developer.android.com every time and search for a particular class. Whenever you need to look for a class, just type AD tab and the class you're interested in. And press enter from the list of suggestions. That is how you use the Android SDK reference. Also, there are times where you may, you might want to access these documents offline. You can do that. In order to do that, uh, you have to download the offline documentation. Let's go to Eclipse and I'll show you how to do that. This is the Eclipse ADT. You're going to click on the Android SDK Manager. Under the specific platform, you can see a documentation for Android SDK. You can see that I've already downloaded this uh, documentation. If you have not downloaded it already, just select it and click on install package. The documentation will be downloaded for you. And once you download the document, you can access it from your SDK folder. To do that, go to Finder and Mac or your My Computer and Windows and go to your SDK install location. I have my SDK in DevTools slash ADT bundle and under the SDK folder you can find a documents folder and this document folder is where all your downloaded offline documentation will be placed. Click on index.html and this is where you have the or off your offline documentation. Go to develop and under reference you can get an offline version of the Android SDK reference. You can use this also. You can also do all sort of things that you can do with the online version. You can search for classes that you're interested in. And you can browse through every class that, or interface that you're interested in. That's about it. And in this video, I showed you how to use uh, the Android SDK reference. I also showed you how to use the Android SDK reference search Chrome extension. And at last, I showed you how to download an offline copy of your Android SDK and access it from your SDK folder.